Good morning, guys. Welcome back to my channel. I am so obsessed with my outfit for the day. Let me just show you. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Okay. This is my outfit for the day. I got this underneath. I think this black bodysuit is from Misguided. And this is from HM. This is Fashion Nova. And my shoes, if you guys can see, are Calvin Klein. A little bit uncomfortable with my big hole for the jeans. Um, I have another pair, but it's in the washer, so. But I'm not really seeing anyone like for a listing appointment, so I can just dress whatever I want. So cute. Oh! <laughs> Nine o'clock right now and I've got a pretty busy day. I don't have any appointment today, but I was supposed to have a listing sign today. And then also when I was at home, I've got like a couple phone calls. I talked to a previous owner and then she found a buyer. She wants me to do the paperwork, which is fine. Um, so I would do like the flat fee for her. And then there's someone else contacted me that was referred by someone that watched my YouTube video and he wants to sell one of the lot that he has. So I'm gonna do some research on it and then give him a call in 15 minutes. In today's video, it's, I'm kind of stepping out of my comfort zone. Um, I wanna talk about the real estate market. So I've been asking so many times when I go on listing appointments, seller was like, hey, what do you see about the real estate market? Like, should we sell our house right now? Or should we wait on to like a few more years to sell? Or maybe next day in the springtime? Um, and then buyers come to me be like, hey, when should we buy investment property when can we buy it when the market is the lowest of low so in today's video i am going to answer all the questions for you but first let's talk about a few factors because when we talk about housing market we talk about unemployment rate that's number one and then we talk about uh the mortgage interest rate and then we also talk about you know the supply and demand in between like different market like what inventory you have there but obviously when i talk like this video it's pretty general broad so i'll cover the general information and then also i will at the end talk about like philadelphia in general i'll give you guys some examples and then what is happening in philly because you know i'm a realtor here so that's the information that i know firsthand okay so let's talk about unemployment rate uh right around march is when the thing happened and people start getting really scared and then a lot of houses are not really put on the market for sale and sellers doesn't really want strangers to go on look at their property so unemployment start to jump really high at april it becomes like 14.7 percent right now if the statistics on the chart Right now it falls back down to 7.9. As more states are start to opening back up, stores are start, start to open and people going back to work or they find a new job. So unemployment goes back to normal. It's a great indicator that things will be back to normal. However, that's not really good for sellers because when things are falling back to normal, people are thinking, well, I'm okay now, you know, we can put house back on the market. So we're not really going to experience the high that we have right now. If there are a few factors that makes the housing price goes up in the month of September, in the month of July, August, September. When we look at the sales record, we can see at the same time of 2019 versus right now, the sale price went up even when you are in the pandemic. There are a few reasons. One is the supply and demand. When there's the same demand, but there's only a few inventories, very little supply, that kind of draws up the sale price. And then also, you know, when interest rate is super low, drops the interest rate that makes the buyer is capable of affording a lot more house a lot more expensive houses so that kind of indicate and pushes buyer to go on the market and start shopping for houses and then also with the cares act government are start to sending more fundings to people and then just kind of help you get you know more situated so a lot of more people actually have more money in their pocket so they can kind of spend on real estate or
are my seller. If you are a seller and you have a house that's ready to sell, you don't really live at the property and you are not like a senior with an underlying issue, I would recommend you to put it on the market ASAP because the best time to sell a house is right now, right? And if you are someone who is at the age of, you know, 70 and above and then you have some underlying issue, I would recommend you sell your house right now if you can move out of the property because if the house is vacant, it's empty, it's easier for the realtor to show and then also your safety comes first. If you find another place you're not there, then that's a great idea. When I tell my older sellers, I told them, I said, hey, I would rather for you to maybe hold on to it for just a little while because senior housings, like senior homes, sometimes these people, areas are very packed and it can get dangerous. Uh, maybe next year or in a few years when the vaccine comes out, you know, people are falling back to normal routine. That's when I think you should sell it accordingly because everyone has a different situation, right? But as far as the buyer goes, we have to look at different indi different indicator. Like, are you a first time home buyer? Are you planning on buying a property that you're gonna live there for maybe more than 10 years? If that's the case, I would suggest you to jump in the market right now to really take advantage of the low interest rate. However, if you are like an investor, you have tons of cash, I would probably suggest you to hold on to it for maybe another two or three more years because the Fed pretty much guaranteed and ensured us that they're not gonna raise the interest rate anytime soon. So a lot of people are saying, okay, yeah, but like, you know, look at the forbearance, look at the foreclosure. Well, foreclosure right now is paused. And from what I heard, it's gonna start at the end of December. If the Democrat wins the election, the auction house might be pushed even more, or, you know, the eviction is gonna be postponed also. So those things are always continuously like changing, but the Fed will, and then also the government will use every policy and everything that they can think of to ensure that people don't panic, you know, they don't, they don't just go full close right away. Even if you are behind with your monthly payment, um, if you are behind with your monthly payment, you can work with the bank. They have different plans. You can have, you know, maybe extend your loan. They have different options for you to kind work with you instead of just foreclose your house. Because every time when they foreclose a house, the bank takes the most hit and the bank doesn't want that. So, and then also like people have sayings like, well, is this the same as the 2008 uh, mortgage crisis? Um, no, it's not. I mean, 2008, when we look at the bank, they have different standards. Right now, they have really learned a lesson in 2008 where if they are approving your loan, they have to first jump up your credit score. It used to be 650, now they jump up to uh, 760, and then it used to be like 30% down, now it's 40% down. So I know this is like kind of like everywhere, but like long story short, if you are an investor, I would suggest you to keep an eye out on your current market to see like when is your auction house is gonna be open. How many inventories do you have with foreclosed houses? And then how is the forbearance going in your local market? Check with the bank and you know, see, cause those are the first hand information that can kind of guide towards the housing market, what, what direction it's gonna go. And the best way right now is maybe take advantage of interest rate and refinance on your house so you can hold on to more cash. So that way, if a great opportunity jumps in front of you, you can take advantage of it. So um, I hope this video can kind of give you guys more insight and information about, you know, the real estate market. So I hope this video, um, you guys can learn a lot of information from me. And if you have any questions, make sure you comment down below. And then this far, make sure you comment fortune cookie down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.